I'm actually very bullish now that the recovery from a bear market will happen in one of two ways. Corrects and then goes or comes sharper. It depends on central bank action, liquidity, that kind of stuff. But if I look forward, I'm very bullish because we've just gone through the rate cycle. So that's out of the way. Let's say the consensus is right. It's it's the rate of change that matters. The rate of change comes down first, then sticks. So that's good for risk assets. We've marked down everything in value and price. Um, and then we've got the market is fairly upbeat. So I enjoy this series because I believe that everyone is looking in that direction, which usually means that there are opportunities to be found. Other car companies give them cheap loans and run the inventory into the dealers and let them deal with it. Um, so what's happening here is they have to deal with their inventory. So I think it's the right thing to do because, you know, the price of secondhand testers has been falling as all secondhand cars have. And so to said, what has he done at Twitter? Laid off tons of people. And what has he done at Tesla cut prices? That's exactly what recessions are all about. That's exactly what the Fed wants to see. They want to see prices come down. They want to see a rise in or a decrease in wage demand. So, you know, it's kind of exactly as the framework work that you and I have been looking at for a while, which is, you know, recession is coming. And I've lost count. In the first quarter, there was a liquidation. Uh, I believe Tesla is such a popular stock that it is actually lagged. So what I've been looking at is what I call these exponential age stocks, which are big technology companies that are sitting on top of exponential adoptions of technologies. And in Tesla's case, it's AV. AI and robotics. I mean, they've got like five of them embedded in the business, but all of these, when he put up a log chart, so Amazon's a beautiful chart since his beginning, it's been in the log channel since it launched. So it's incredible. It's because it's a network adoption stock. So most of these stocks have all gone down to two standard deviations oversold. You know, I, I put this regression channel that's easy to do on Bloomberg. And they've all got two, you know, the bottom of the channel is about a hundred dollars and it pretty much touched it so you know have we got to the kind of levels where <sighs> tesla's bad news is in the price probably not 100 guaranteed but i would suggest that you know is the eb market going away over the next five years oh are we going to sell more evs well you know you live in europe and you see it clearer than everybody else dba full self-driving car network he can't figure out the Tesla balance sheet. I mean, that's a ludicrous assumption, right? So, of course, he knows the question is, what is he doing with Twitter? You know, and that's a more interesting thing to me. I think you're right. Uh, Tesla's been caught in the crosshairs of that. And um, the question is more what he's doing. And then I actually think he's using it. He gets them. So they fund the he's got audio content. Uh, plus short form. You've got humanity in one place. That's pretty. That's worth 44 billion, considering Microsoft is putting 10 billion into OpenAI at a valuation of what, 30 billion dollars? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm hearing more of this kind of mild recession, soft landing calls from people. And I don't really see that I see short and sharp, but I don't really see the mild element. Maybe it's to do with. So, as you know, in global macro, the rate of change is more important than absolutes. So if the rate of change changes, all of these beach balls that have been held down by the heavy weight of interest rate rises and that rate of change that's all gone so suddenly, you know, emerging markets go up, gold goes up, crypto goes up, equities go up, you know, that whole story. I don't know what the, the BOJ is doing. I've kind of lost track of them. I almost kind of, I know it's a bad thing to say ignore it because people overfocus on Japan and in the end it's still pretty contained. It's not like they're going to let rates go to 2%. So, you know, and are they going to think of the beach ball, right? There was another weight on the world, which was the world's largest trading economy was closed. So if you reopen, then the beach ball rises. Anything that has Chinese exposure is going to see a net marginal increase in demand from where they were. So I think the question is, does China coming back into the world economy mean anything?